geekologists. We are systematic geekology. We are your priests to the geeks. And if this is your first time listening or first time uh, having an experience with us here in a comic book store, uh, what we mean by priests to the geeks is that we are those mediators between those things we geek out on and the bigger questions around theology, philosophy, the questions that haunt us at night or uh, capture our imagination. And uh, I am one of your hosts, Will Rose, one of your priests to the geeks. And um, we're going to go down the line here and introduce ourselves and uh, share one thing that you're geeking out on. That's kind of what we do here at uh, System of Geekology. We geek out on things and then share and then spread the geek around. So uh, we'll start way down the other end. TJ. Oh, man, I've been geeking out on Jujutsu Kaisen super hard. Okay. Jujutsu Kaisen is at its peak right now, I think, in the manga. Uh, also, a company called Gamer Subs. Um, you know, that's beside the point. Uh, just released a flavor called Cursed Energy. It's raspberry tea. Uh, <laughs> it's delicious. It is an official collaboration with Jujutsu Kaisen. It's great. Awesome. Oh, I thought Elizabeth. you were going to introduce me like No, TJ. no, you, we just we're going to start down there. <laughs> Elizabeth, go for it. was like, this is TJ. Yeah. So, All right, yeah, Elizabeth, your turn. <laughs> thank you. Gosh. Just a little respect, please. There yeah. you go. I'm Elizabeth. I have been geeking out over Harry Potter lately. I am re-listening to all the audiobooks, and we're just having a good time. Nice. I'm a Ravenclaw, in case you needed to know. Okay, we did. We, we did want to know. I knew I liked you. Christian, what's up, buddy? All right, you <laughs> next. Right, I am next, and I'm geeking out. Last night, Pang is, uh, was able to stay at my parents' house, and we watched the Studio Ghibli film, Whisper of the Heart. Oh. And she got to see me cry like a little baby nice. over the, uh, Shizuku's journey there. It's uh, a good one. Uh, I really enjoyed that film. Like, I mean, maybe just be recently biased, but 10 out of 10. Okay, nice. That's a good recommendation. Um, hey, everybody, I'm Will. What I've been geeking out on, uh, there's a new Ahsoka trailer. And with all the strikes going on with writers and uh, actors, I have a feeling there's going to be a delay in a lot of the things that we geek out on. But looks like Ahsoka's done. And they put out another two-minute trailer, and I cannot wait for this show. Uh, a collaboration of rebels and clone wars and prequels and all kinds of things coming together and i cannot wait for this tv show that's going to come in august big star wars fan and can't wait for this show um let me um we're, we're coming to you live from temple's edge comic book store here in matthews north carolina and so uh joshua had this vision this idea of us coming together doing an event here in matthews at this store so we can geek out on things give out prizes perhaps do some games, do some devotions together, hang out, uh, just an excuse for us to hang out together in person. So we're really excited to do this and do this as an episode and do live on our YouTube channel. So welcome all of our guests and those who are listening now, uh, presently, live or in the future. We love you. All right, so uh, let me set the context. We are in a comic book store surrounded by comic books, and action figures and toys and card games and friends and so um as we're around these things that capture our imagination these things that we geek out on uh, our topic today is a topic that we've had before one where we talk about what if what if we discover life on other planets what impact would it have on uh life society uh, government, religion, faith, how would that impact us as individuals and as a society and communities of faith? And so we've talked about those things. You can go back to former um, uh, episodes and explore what we've talked about. But today we're going to have a little different kind of twist to it, a little different kind of twist. Instead of talking about what if we discover life on other planets that are conscious beings that have a central nervous system that can communicate with us, what if, what if we discover like, basic life or plant life or life that can't really communicate back with us. So what if plant life on, <laughs> on other planets, I'm looking at Joshua and he's like <laughs> looking at me and mouthing some things. And I'm wondering like, I'm, no, no, you're fine. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm wondering if the script, if I'm keeping with the script. Um, yeah. <laughs> Things are really hard to record with him. Maybe he's like mouthing. Oh, we love Joshua. Joshua. He he something. is the mastermind behind all of this, and we're very very excited. Um, so um, so let's let's throw that out there. You know, we've I've I've been reading some books on like 
theology and what would happen if we discover life on other planets. There's there's astrobiology of like finding just biology on other planets. There's astrotheology. What's the impact on religion and thought uh, if we discover life on other planets? And uh, there's astroethics, like what, what would it mean about these questions we ask about who we are in the universe and how we treat life? Uh, so all those kind of topics come together. And so... Um, I'm just going to throw it out there because TJ, I, th I think, has some biology background, major, studied. He he's our he's not necessarily a botanist, but but I think he likes plants and biology. And so TJ, let me just throw it out there. Uh, what if, what if we don't necessarily discover intelligent life, but just like a random plant or or microorganism somewhere on another planet? Right. So plant life would be huge. Would be massive. Uh, microorganisms, I, I think, is the most likely to really happen. And uh, unfortunately, like not a lot would happen immediately because, you know, we can't really get to most of the planets, uh, at least not manned, definitely not manned. Uh, we can't get to any of them actually yet. But uh, the implications it would have for uh, not just like medicine, but also food, mm -hmm. you know, xenogastrology. That's a word I've not ever heard before. Super, super exciting. Can you well, say that again? Say that yeah, again. Yeah. Xenogastrology. <laughs> I like that. Okay, cool. But I think that would be the biggest impact on, you know, plant life. Okay. Xeno plant life. What is xeno? Like, Xenogastrology. It's, I think it's a word. I, I think I made it up just now. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, it's just like, uh, what is the word that I'm thinking of? Uh, experimental gastrology. Or, gosh, what do they call it? Like the, the fancy guys who make bubbles that taste like sweet tea and stuff. Sweet. That kind Gastro of thing. Okay, it's just, yeah, gastro, you, you know, like. cooking. Yeah. Fancy cooking with, yeah, with, you know, plants from other planets. But uh, that and medicine, uh, you know, most, most medicines are based on a plant one way or the other. That could be huge. We find a, a plant on another planet and we manage to get a sample. We start cultivating it and... It turns out it stunts growth severely. Mm. We'd use that as like a targeted treatment for cancer. Yeah, and I'm and I'm hoping that we don't necessarily like discover like venom. No, that would you be know, awesome. like the the villain <laughs> venom, like the, those kind of things. Like, what if we bring something back and it like takes takes over? It's like an algae bloom of that. Those things. So, I think behind this question, the the questions that we ask when we talk about like extraterrestrials or intelligent life behind that is what is our place in the universe? We think about like our planet, we think our cosmos, we think about who are we, why do we matter, do we matter? Is there something behind it all, an intelligence uh, that that is directing all these things that give us purpose? And so if we find life on other planets, that helps us or really kind of shifts our thinking in terms of who we understand at who we understand ourselves as humans and our place in the universe. But then again, like cosmos creation um, how do we take care of our plant life here? How do we take care of plant life uh, beyond the stars, beyond our own our own planet? So those are some of the questions that kind of rise up to the surface for me. And again, we're surrounded by comic books and and, and this and there's so many cool stories out there that explore and ask the questions: What if you know what life out there? We encounter yeah. our life. What would they be like? Um, and I and I think it, even when we reduce it to not necessarily an alien from a spaceship or a civilization that uses technology on another planet, but but um, just random plant life or microbes in in the water. Yeah, yeah, I think I think pretty immediately we would see like a massive shift in you know the world's cosmological goals to yeah. like retrieving that, mm -hmm. cultivating it. Uh, as far as what would happen immediately is they would definitely start trying to go get that plant or microorganism to study it. Cause that's our yeah. curiosity as humans. And, you know, our, more and more science has shown us through like the James Webb telescope and others, how vast our universe is, how many planets there are, how many stars and galaxies and, and the numbers are in the billions. And so there's this kind of idea of like, of course there's life out there because there's just so many plants. And uh, if, if the same chemical makeups are around our own solar system, then they're out there in space, then, then surely there's another planet in kind of a habitable zone, a Goldilocks zone that can cultivate or or life can evolve there and so those are the questions uh that we're asking I, elizabeth i'll ask you like what have you thought about these questions uh you've shared before that like you're not a big like sci-fi person yeah. that's not okay a not a day in your life but <laughs> but in terms of asking the question look at the stars wondering 
the big questions out there, are we alone? Or even like going down to plant life, what are, what are some thoughts? Sure, it's pretty. Look, Big Dipper. That's it. That's it. That's pretty much so it. So romantic. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> is. Yes. Most like us to find as far as like what kind of plant that might help with cooking. So, you, even if we did find plant life on the other planet, I just think it's going to be so much money, so much tax dollars, and then only the elite is going to get to it. So, mm. if you mm. can't find a plant to cure cancer, the modern man is not going to change at all because we're not going to be able to afford it at yeah. all. Just like right. today's medicine, we yeah. can't afford half the medicine we have. So, yeah. I'm kind of like, it would be cool. Like, if we did do it, oh, cool. Yeah. What she means is a new grain, something we could make like a uh, space bread out of. Space I mean, yeah, bread. Yeah, that's cool. But here's space the thing. beer. Only space the elite, There's a only space. The elite uh, chef who can afford that space yeah, yeah. will get it. So my space life, bread. my life would not change whatsoever. So I don't really think about space too much. And, and that's a good point because we're seeing it now. Like only the the top one percent, the elite, the billionaires are able to even like go to space at the moment just to kind of have fun or explore. And, and they're if pushing they that. Space, or is it a conspiracy that then a tin can with lots of really good TVs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They think they're going to space. Mm -hmm. And compute yeah. and the moon and so going to the moon. Did we really go? I mean, just say, it's, a, it's a question. There, there are. I really don't care questions. enough. I just like to bring the debate. Yeah, I love it, and, and that's a part of the debate. It's part of the conversation, and I, I think there are ethical questions that revolve around this about where do we uh, invest, what do we put our money towards, what's going to help all of humanity, or just those who have the money to be able to do it, and whether it goes down to like pharmaceuticals and cancer treatments and insulin for diabetes and and food for people who are hungry, like all that, you know, again these speculations and thinking beyond our planet out into the universe helps us ground us even here to think about the big questions about how we're funding health and food and hunger uh, here right in our backyard uh, or right yeah. down the road from us. So that's, I think those are all super valid questions and points to, to bring up. Christian, what are you, what are you thinking? You're in seminary. Do they have like an astro theology or astrobiology class in seminary that they're wrestling with these big questions around faith and science? Not his yeah, seminary. I, yeah, not, not, his, not, I would kill for that though. class. Really. Okay, all right. It that's not a question too. That's yeah. ethical question uh, too about murder. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that kill, later. Kill, not murder. There's okay, the there's a difference. Kill okay. him with <laughs> We're parsing out that commandment. I see where you're going. <laughs> He's studying Hebrew, y'all. He's studying Hebrew. So no, we'll I am it. done with Hebrew. Thank God. Yeah, now I it's hear Greek you. I have to worry about. Oh, that's easier. Which is easier. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so what are some of the questions? I mean, you're a comic book fan. Yeah. You you love uh, sci-fi. We're we're Star we're Star Wars buddies. Mm -hmm. Like, what are some some things out there that come to your mind when asking this question? But it's like, well, can this plant life, if it is able or algae or what have you, can we bring it here? Would it just spread like crazy? Is it going to be okay. the kudzu of mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the astrophysicist world? Mm -hmm. And can we control it in a way that doesn't harm our own environment? Or could it do something that even repairs our own environment? Maybe it's adapted in a sense that uh, being more of a extrophilic, that, that's correct, right? Oh, it's that's like, a good word, too. Uh, I'm going to look I, it up. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of like I'll lives in that environments that oh, are sure. a little harsher than yeah. normal. We need a dictionary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and see, like, well, what can we do with that? Or mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, is it ethical to even bring it here in the first place? Can mm. we remove something from God where he put it? and take it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we evasive, evasive species, you know, in terms of whether it's animals or plants, even our own planet, what happens if the, like a seed falls on a ship and then you bring it across the seas to another uh, country and whether it can thrive or not, or take over is, is something to think about, or maybe we don't think about it. Or we don't think ahead. Or we don't ask those questions before we do it. We can do it. So why not just go ahead and do it? So that's, yeah. that could be a problem too. TJ, I see you nodding your head. You have some thoughts in there that you're thinking about. Yeah. I mean, well, I think we're taking the plant anyway. Uh, put it in a greenhouse, nice and nice and sealed up, recreate its planet's atmospheres. Mm -hmm. And ideally it wouldn't be able to grow anywhere else on earth naturally. Right. That's kind of my idea. Well, a little bit more fantastical than what is likely to happen. You know, we're going to find a planet that is just like Earth and grows plants like Earth's. But, you know, anything is possible. Yeah. I mean, when you're talking about exoplanets, especially like anything is possible. Recently, we discovered one. I want to say it's a few hundred light years away. Mm -hmm. um, it is the closest planet to its star and it has titanium clouds. Okay. 
And because it has titanium clouds, it still has an atmosphere, despite being the closest one to its star, which normally what happens, like we see with Mercury, that's just a rock. Right. There's, it is just, the sun is just destroying Mercury every day. It can't do anything to protect itself. It doesn't have a magnetic field. There's nothing there for it. Right. There's no ionosphere. There's nothing. But literally anything is possible. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where our kind of imaginations run wild with these sort of things. Um, there's a book out there. I've recommended it before. Paul Davies, an astrophysicist, wrote a book called The Eerie Silence. And, and he's talking about kind of like, all right, if there are the, the stats are so many, so many plants, so many stars, so many galaxies, and there's just like numbers you can't even fathom, then why is it so quiet? Why haven't we discovered it yet? Why, why are we, um, is it because we haven't traveled that far? We haven't been contacted yet. And, and he's of the kind of like, the mindset he's not necessarily religious he 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 confesses he likes uh the religious questions that emerge and and what that would mean to religions around the world the book i'm reading on astrotheology ted peters edited it he's a lutheran theologian in, in california paul davies actually wrote the forward to it it's pretty cool they have a uh, even though they're on different sides of the coin in terms of like re religious life and faith they're able to still have this conversation around faith and science which i think is really healthy anyway he goes to say like uh rare earth that that he's of the mindset he was director of seti they've been listening a long time whether it's extraterrestrials out there or not and it's pretty quiet and so he he's of the mindset leans into may maybe earth is rare Maybe Earth is one of the just super, super rare. And even, <laughs> all right, there's some doggies. I don't know if we can hear it. Um, um, but, but yeah, so why haven't we discovered yet? Why, why is it just because we just haven't reached that part yet? Uh, Christian, why, why haven't we discovered any life or plant life out there yet? Well, it either hasn't made its way here or we're just mm -hmm. not technologically capable enough to reach it yet. Right. I mean, there's the question of, you know, is there life on Europa right now mm -hmm. is one of the big ones people are asking. I mean, plenty of other moons of Jupiter and Saturn, too. Yeah, a few of them. Yeah. Like Ganymede, Io. I think Io actually has a great potential for plant life. Sulfur or microorganisms. Definitely not plants. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we've proven beyond doubt that there are microorganisms outside of Earth. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Tardigrades. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's just the limits of our technology at this moment in time. Right. And Paul Davids was saying that even if we find microbes on Mars and like, oh, look, there's planet. He says that we're such an impact zone and over, you know, hundreds of thousands of years, billions of years, rocks smashing into both Mars and Earth, that perhaps there's just kind of microbe shrapnel that are that are on Mars, that it could just be from us, not necessarily originated on Mars by itself, but it just kind of traveled as you travel across an ocean to another planet or another um, yeah. kind of yeah. continent, you know, same thing could happen. Yeah. Cross-pollinating. Cross-pollinating. Yeah. Yeah. C.S. Lewis actually put that there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he went He went on site to write Paralandra. Yeah. 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 Yeah, cool. Um, all right. Um, let's see some other questions here. Any questions from our, our viewers out there, Joshua, at all? Anything coming up? Is there a question here on um, our page that interests you guys the most that you want to um, think about? Uh, we've talked a little bit about, like, um, you know, how many planets we uh, are out there and those kinds of things, but bring back samples. What other questions that strike your imagination or, or want to dive into? Yeah. Oh, well, I think the, the question is, how likely are we to, you know, get to these places? Okay. Which currently, it's just not very likely. Right. Unfortunately. But, you know, if we can somehow prove that there is life on Europa, we get, you know, space whales in there. What are we going to do about that? Not much. Yeah, yeah. We, we've kind of, um, we're... We're not even, oh, I guess we're close, but not that close to like putting people, human beings on Mars. And that's the closest one to us. You talk about a, a planet 100 or even three light years away. It would take a long time. There'd mm -hmm. be some other things that have to advance in terms of like wormholes and sleep stasis that would have to get us there. But, you know, we are, uh, Paul Davies brings up again in that book, again, that if we encounter intelligent life out there, most likely we're going to encounter their technology before he encounter them and so same way with us most likely on other planets we're going to send technology or spaceships or drones or or what our telescopes out there um way before humans ever ever get there so we may take pictures of something before we can actually like go and step foot on one of these planets and or take a sample and bring it back to earth we'll have to have a robot or some kind of technology do that do that for us um, um 
Do, do you guys want that to happen? Are, are, are you like hopeful about those things? Is this something like, again, Elizabeth's like, ah, right, no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> That's I'm good just here. a lot of taxpayers. Like who's going to fund it? <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? I can't even get my student loans forgiven by the government right now. Mm -hmm. Why do I want to have them, you know, go into space on well, my uh, diet? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. This is why I love having Paying Along. Yeah. yeah for all this. It's always nice to have a dissenting voice. Mm -hmm. like, I, I really appreciate it. But uh, I'm all for it, Will. Yeah. Like going out there and exploring and seeing what else is, what else? I mean, I think God is way too creative to just stop with us. That's really my main argument for why I think there is other yeah, yeah. intelligent life out there. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he didn't just stop with sapient beings either. He made plant life. He made amoebas and so on and so forth. Like what else could he have made that we only have barely scratched the surface up by just looking at our own plant? There's a diversity in the ecology of our, of our, our planet. And, and why wouldn't it be in, in the universe too. They, and I love that, you know, Psalm eight, when I look to the heavens and I consider the work of your hands, what are we that you're mindful of us? I mean, that, that's what I draw back to. Humans are naturally curious and want to learn and grow and think through. So, so yeah, just like exploring, you know, Hey, that mountain there, what's on the other side of that mountain or, Hey, there's a body of water. Let's go underneath it and see what's there again, beyond our own stars, what's out there. And, and how does that um, impact our shift or help me grow in understanding my place in the universe and my understanding of, of, of God. Well, what are your opinions? Like, okay, so we don't find alien life, but we find just plant life. Would that have an impact on like your faith community? Uh, we, we've talked about individually what we think about that, but in terms of the people you hang with in your circles, your faith communities, socio-political um, communities you hang with, what, what impact do you think it would have? Would you be like, oh, life goes on or to be like, wow, this helps us this forces us to rethink a lot of big things. Yeah, I think first, like my group in particular, be like, wow, awesome. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> right. My group would think it's a government scheme just to try and figure out like what's really going on and trying to distract yeah. us. My yeah, dad to be would honest. Think that. Yeah, yeah. Like that, like my group. I, I would be like, okay, cool. I don't care. Right. Me personally. That, yeah, it, it is interesting when there were some indictments, presidential indictments going down. All of a sudden, there's this like whistleblower about a UFO. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, don't look down here. Look up. Look mm -hmm. up, y'all. So uh, there, there is something that, along with that that I, that I entertain and think about as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to side with TJ on this. I know there are some people I know who would be like with me, like, oh, my gosh, what does this mean? What are the implications right. of what we've discovered here? And other people go, oh, OK, that's nice. It's like whenever someone ever sees an article, we found this new sea cucumber or <laughs> what have you. It's like me. I'm like, there's a new sea cucumber out there. That's amazing. Right. That's right. amazing. And yeah, I just saw that article like a month ago or something like that. OK, and I need that article. Yeah. There's a sea cucumber. I kind of want to. And they, we pickle they, it. They yeah. clickbaited me, too. So, OK, oh, no, new. Uh, like a uh, undersea creature discovered. It's like, oh my gosh! Yeah, we gotcha. finally found the sea. That's something. how they get yeah. you. It barely qualifies as a creature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, are, are you saying media lied to you? Yes, media oh. unfortunately oh, lied. Wow, to <laughs> shocking. They lured you in. <laughs> we, we are the media. Said, we are I currently lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> We're not calling each other truthers. Just saying. <laughs> well, okay. Again, this book I'm reading about astro theology there, um, Ted Peters draws out these different groups that there's uh, the idea of like never aliens because it doesn't um, go coincide with how we understand scripture or God. There's those who like are like always aliens, like they are the ones who are going to save us from everything. And then there's the ones in the middle who are kind of like um, we should have a posture of welcome to to aliens or or the other or the stranger and that's the po posture jesus had towards the other around him so maybe that should be our posture uh towards exploration and, and meeting strangers or or um or aliens we don't alien. even have that posture with refugees today right, exactly so, so perhaps we should learn about that <laughs> first before we figure that out um yeah yeah um but these mental exercises or or examples that entertain our imagination can also help us hopefully train us to think through in community and communities um, how to answer these questions so that it does help us when we meet the refugee or the stranger or feed those or encounter a different kind of plant life um, or a sea cucumber. Are there sea cucumbers <laughs> on like Europa? You Probably. Think? Okay. Yeah, let's hope. Yeah. Man. I think in a perfect world, uh, you know, with cheap 
private space flight. Will and I will be able to go surfing on Europa one day. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We haven't even talked about like water on other planets and waves and physics and gravitational pulls yeah. and what you could do. It could be like, that's the next, that's yeah. the next what if. Oh, what if wait. Will found <laughs> water on another planet, an ocean on another planet? <laughs> yeah, Europa's got crazy swells. <laughs> Has to. Okay. Man, Jupiter's gravity making waves. Ooh, forget about it. It's gonna be tough. I did actually. Yeah, I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, other questions out there that are lingering, and for our our audience, audi um, yeah, Austin. Yep. I'm interested. Um, if we knew that plant life was endangered on another planet, or the planet was about to be destroyed, how would we would we have a duty to save it? Yeah, and not necessarily a duty, but we would feel obliged. I feel like. Once again, we don't do that now. Look at all the animals we're letting go extinct. And so they can, can they hear I it in here? Should I repeat the question? Can they, are they able to hear what you're saying? Probably repeat not. Repeat it just in case. Um, yeah. No, so so Josh was asking like, yeah, so if we discover plant life on another planet that's like endangered or, or um, in danger of extinction or not existing, do we have an obligation or, or a duty to take care of it as kind of stewards of the cosmos or creation of Earth? And um, for me, it's somewhat easy question to answer. But as Elizabeth has shared, as we look at what the kind of history of what humans do to our own planet, um, we don't have a very good track record. So um, what do you guys think? Is no, there, so if you if you look at every endangered species unless they're like very recently endangered there is an organization dedicated to preserving that species i right. promise mm -hmm. yes there may be an organization but it doesn't stop people from still poaching even though it's endangered no so of course not that's what i'm saying like even if there There's is a struggle between like even if it is the organization you're going to have some kind of joke it happens in almost every movie there's, there's always that jerk who ruins everything because it's like yes i'm gonna take this no mm -hmm. one's gonna know i'm gonna make a lot of money yeah but you know so we just, would, as people, would be trying to save it. Maybe as you people are the organization, but not people as in the whole. You can't speak. Yeah, for but the whole I bet people. there's more people in the organization than there are poachers. Yeah, but I'm saying yeah. the point is, we will not. It's, yeah, no, and how would you, united. How would you know if it's even well, endangered if we're just now discovering the plant? So that means you would have to discover the whole entire plant. There's a black hole really close to the planet. No. See, yep. it's just that's, it's the, illogical. Illogical. that's the kind of thing we're talking illogical. about. Like it is, we can tell that that <laughs> plant might go extinct soon. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Easy. No, we're going to be but, like, ooh, plant. Let's bring it home. Yeah. Well, I think that's going to happen with every plant. Yes. If we find them, it's like, oh yeah, that's coming with us. You're coming home with me. Yeah. I it's like it's showing up to the. Uh, it's like going to the animal shelter. It's like, oh, that's mine. <laughs> I think this kind of ties in with another question you have here on this list about you know, does the biblical command to care for our planet extend to the cosmos and other planets? Mm, mm. And I would argue, yes, ultimately, at the end of the day, yeah. I think, I mean, God, the word used there means here where we're around on this planet. But like, that's just because that's all the people were really aware of at the time. Right, right. In my opinion. So like, if we become aware of something like this, that's something else that God chose to make elsewhere. So we'd have the same moral responsibility that he commands us to take care of our own planet to there, in my opinion. Yeah, a, a doctrine around creation um, and taking care of creation, because steward of creation extends not just Earth, but the whole cosmos. And again, we've shared before the Greek word in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that Greek word um, for world is is cosmos or, or cosmo. And so in, in, it entails like all of created things. And yeah, our awareness of, you know, we used to think just was Earth and that was it. And maybe few things beyond us but now that we've seen the extents and vastness of the university like the james webb telescope uh there's there's a lot of creation and so our obligation of taking care of the cosmos um and being stewards of that i think extends to all those things um and, and of course there's always the danger as Lewis said of like exploitation like that's our fallen nature that's the thing that we're wrestling with within me and 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 beyond me with others is how do we uh, resist and uh, fight against that exploitation of others of our own creation and then that would go beyond our stars as well and people who want to capitalize on it and and exploit it and then hopefully there'll be those who who raise the voice of like no how how are we treating this and, and again hopefully that will ground us and not just look beyond the stars beyond us but also how we treat our neighbor here and and now so the original word for the first time that commands it God says for us to take care of everything on Eretz, the ground. So anything on the ground. So I think that 
seems like that specific time it's talking about her, right? Or right. does ground extend to ground on other places? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, does it mean just the ground that they're walking on at Repeat that moment? Repeat what Josh just said so they know what he just said. Yeah, yeah. So uh, um, Joshua lifted up that the the word in scripture around being a good steward. Say that again. What was the Greek word? Eris. 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 Eretz, which means ground. And so, yeah, it, it, it lends kind of itself to think of like, oh, just take care of the ground on, on earth. But what if it's the ground we're walking on? We land on another planet. What if our, our sentient um, AI robot um, that we shoot to um, another planet three light years away, if it lands on the ground, are we there to take care of that ground as well? But even then, if you look into the garden, like Adam and Eve, he was responsible for like this specific ground, this specific area. So you mm -hmm. can even think like, is that even like our ground then to yep. take care of? Mm -hmm. Personally, I actually don't think uh, we are obliged to take care of other grounds. Me too. You're, we're yeah, not. That's because not our. It's like for as me and my house, like this is like ours. Like yeah, this is my. Ma I'm managing this as what God has entrested to me, mm -hmm. and I'm not responsible to manage someone else's. I think. Else's. It does say all. Yeah, yeah. So that does mean all of the earth. Yeah. When we get to the idea of lawns, as we discussed on Whole Church, I do think we should destroy <laughs> that concept entirely, because it's very terrible for the environment, and oh. I don't also also don't want to have to work for it. Yeah. Speaking of environment, though, I do think like. The Environmental Protection Agency would have a division for uh, other planets. Environment. Yeah. But also, when you take care of like, it's Zero natural. Policy. Whenever you take care of what shores and manage yeah. yours well, then the surrounding land will naturally benefit from mm. you being a good manager yeah. of your own. So by you overextending yourself, and if I'm over here trying to like save this, and I'm not stewarding good what my God has given me, that's not going to help anyone. Go yeah. ahead, Josh. I agree. <laughs> this is going to be for pain. That's fine. So I have, to, I have to ask, how much does this extend? Is that just you personally, or does that also then extend to you and your church has to take care of that church's ground? And then does it extend to you and your government has to take care of what your government owns? As I feel it starts with us. But so also it, it compounds. So I can't, I can't tell Christian what to take care of, what God has placed in him. I can't. Even with my church area, we have different convictions. So, so you don't think the communities are responsible for their community, right? I feel like the church being a part of the community is responsible for being a light. So because I care about what God has blessed me with, I'm naturally involved with the community as well. So I will go do Habitats for Humanity. I will go do Adopt the Block because I have managed mm. what God has given me and I have the resources to go forth and help others. Now, I cannot control what other people manage and what their convictions are or if they are doing their daily devotions and whatnot because i spend more time with the lord i feel more guided to do what he has called me to do i can't talk about anyone else's conviction or personal mm -hmm. relationships with the lord yeah i think that's a good point in the sense that like if we take care of ourselves good stewards of our own um, resources, our own health, then we're going to be strengthened and okay to help others in need. So where does that begin? And in our own household, our own communities. And then as we've seen with the, with the pandemic, we are all entangled. Like one thing that affects one person does affect another. Um, same with communities and plant life. There's an a, a ecology of like how um, all all of creation kind of feeds upon itself and affects one another. Uh, but yet if the plant isn't healthy um, and the roots aren't healthy individually, then, then it's not going to be able to bear fruit for, for others as well. So that's uh, interesting tomorrow in, in our church, the, um, the lesson, the, um, the gospel lesson, in the revised common lectionary is the parable of the sower. And, and what I'm intrigued with, with this passage is not only like the types of soil and types of seed and the circumstances, but just kind of the, um, you know, the sower is not a very good farmer. Like uh, they, they just throw in seed everywhere and not paying attention to the soil around them. And so like there's this generosity and also um, like recklessness when it comes to this farmer and sower. And, and for me, it points to like creation and diversity and creation, but also like God's word going out there. And it's like, I just want to get as much out there as possible. So it brings God joy to have this diversity of creation. But I, I think there is a balance uh, to, to how we, um, Think about our own ground that we walk on and the communities and families we're part of, but also what our actions can affect others as well. And I think, you know, thinking about the cosmos, we're sending a lot of um, 
you know, space junk out there, satellites and, and things. How is that going to affect another planet? What if it crashes on another planet and then we have some kind of microorganism bacteria on that because some scientists put their hand on it and then it lands and, and on another planet and then it there's an algae, some kind of algae bloom over there. I think those are some things, kind of astroethics that we can think about when it comes to that as, as well. Yeah. Astro- All good points. It is good. I love that term, yeah. astroethics. Yeah, that's definitely that's my first time hearing that term. Yeah, there mm-hmm. you go. I love I it. Learn something. <laughs> yeah, well, basically, you can take any field of study and just, just put, put astro in front of it. <laughs> astro, you, know, put, you put astro or xeno in front of it, and that exists. So astro surfing, astro baking, astro, astro underwater comic ba- books. basket weaving, astro yeah. underwater basket weaving. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> on Europa while I'm surfing above it. Yeah, I'll, you can got you got to be underwater underwater basket weaving. I'll surf the the waves. <laughs> Um, get a big barrel. Okay, cool. Um, other things we're, we're, how, how far are we doing? We're, we're doing pretty good on time. Uh, other questions out there that's lingering that we don't, you know, um, but it, it's hard to cover everything on a topic like this. That's why we split up these what ifs in terms of aliens of, um, Joshua just revealed there might be another what if alien episode out there that's going to lead into who knows. Um, but, but are we, are we leaving stuff out there that we need to tackle or, Yes, Josh. Lift up. Because yeah. uh, I know you thought about this a lot. Um, repeat the question. The, um, <laughs> as far as what would be easier, as far as like going to another planet to cultivate plants that are there or bringing it back and figuring out how to cultivate it here? Okay, so uh, he asked if it would be easier to go to another planet and cultivate their plants there or to bring it back and cultivate it here. Um, cultivating it here by far, easily. So easily. While it's easier to replicate a different planet's environment here than it is to support human life on another planet. Yeah. That's why even on the moon, like we don't stay on the moon. We can get there. We don't stay there. (laughs) Is there a space station there? Is there is there a Hollywood studio that has (laughs) that flag standing there blowing in the wind? (laughs) I can get to the moon myself. I can jump there. But, yeah, it'd be way easier to bring plant life here. What about bringing their plant life here or bringing our plant life here? Uh, so taking our plant life there, it would be exactly the same as trying to support ourselves there. So if we can do it, we can do it. Mm. Yeah. It, it will be interesting to see. I mean, technology has advanced so much over the last 100 years and the last you know, decade. So what's the next decade look like? What's the next 100 years? What are my grandkids or great grandkids or, you know, um, will yeah yeah what what <laughs> what would that look like and what we will explore and, and how will it shift i mean a couple hundred years ago people didn't even know dinosaurs exist you know they were like oh we found some bones oh what is this and what's the next couple hundred years that we'll find or discover on our own planet yeah. or beyond you know um, what the exactly uh that, that question you know what the first dinosaur found was a plant fossil wise no dinosaur wise you don't it so. uh it was uh iguanodon oh iguanodon yeah yeah, really unfun, right? And nobody remembers that, but yeah, it's an iguanodon. Okay. I thought you were going to talk about maybe Loch Ness Monster. Oh, wait, no, ATS. No, we never found it. They're not technically dinosaurs, That's right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. There is a distinguishing. Mm-hmm. Fun. Or, yeah, what if we don't? Here's another question. What if we go to another planet and we don't find plant life, but we find like fossils of a plant life that they were once there and gone? What that would be just upsetting. That would be. <laughs> yeah, because we can like see that on Mars. Uh, Mars, Mars has. Mars has dry riverbeds. Right. Although well, they look like dry riverbeds. They could be something else, but they look like dry riverbeds. <laughs> it was a fear. It's like, hmm. All right. It's, if, I, if you say so. If you say so. Things like, that's oh, that's good. actually, that's just a cardboard cutout of a red circle. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> if you think. Cool. Yeah. Well, this Your is telescope a... has a slide in it that makes it look like there's Mars. It's all a conspiracy. <laughs> Super fun. Um, Anything out there, Joshua, on online land, uh, listeners, live people, we, again, it's, I'm really appreciative for uh, Temple's Edge for allowing us to, to podcast here and have an event and hang out with some people that I've only met through the internet, not in person. I now know they're real live people that Elizabeth's not like a conspiracy, like for someone like a, an AI hologram, but she's a real human being. If I was um, an AI, I would do some work for myself before appearing. <laughs> Um, so, so we are very, very appreciative. And, um, so yeah, we're going to do some plugs like, yeah, if, yeah, we're out there like subscribe. Uh, what's that? 
Oh, oh yeah. We're going to be at Theology Beer Camp in Missouri in October. And uh, we're going to be there among like um, 20 or so more other podcasters calling the God Pods, uh, podcasting and theology. We're the ones that lean more into kind of like uh, the geek uh, geekdom of things and nerdy things like that. Uh, but we discovered at the last Theology Beer Camp that was hosted at my congregation uh, last fall is that there are there are a lot of people that geek out on a lot of different stuff, not just theology and and kind of communities and how um, communities of faith are deconstructing or reconstructing, but also, man, there, everything from like, oh man, I came in. There are so many people. We put out on a whiteboard like, hey, tell us some things that you geek out on. And it was just filled with tons of, of things, some stuff I've never even heard of. So everybody geeks out on something. And so we hope you could be a part of Theology Beer Camp. We have a promo code um, that is escaping my mind right now. Geekology God Pod, all caps. You'll get a discount ticket. And yeah, again, to hang out with us in person. And you don't have to even drink beer to, to go. Like there are plenty of people who don't uh, drink that are there drinking tea or wine or uh, just hanging out with some of their favorite uh, podcasters. And uh, we appreciate all of our listeners. We appreciate you taking time. There's a lot of options out there, a lot of things to geek out on. And we're glad that you can be a part of this with us. So, so thank you. What's that? Recommendations. Um, yeah, yeah, we can we can do some recommendations. I will recommend this very thick book with a lot of articles from different authors, Astro Theology, edited by Ted Peters. Uh, if you want to go deeper into this, man, it has everything for like, would us the discovery of extraterrestrials and intelligent life impact what we believe about the incarnation and, and Christology. And so I've been diving deep into that. It's a lot of fun uh, to think through. And then um, Paul Davies' Eerie Silence is a fantastic book to explore and think about these things too. So Christian, what you got? Yeah, sure. Uh, keeping along with the theme of this, uh, Mass Effect, the entire series, one of the things, it's not one of the main things, but they bring up the idea of what if we were to meet other races, what would be like the biochemical barriers between us? Like mm -hmm. what can they eat that we can't eat how can they what environments would they live in that we can't live in and i highly recommend that whole series even three i'm not a big fan all this right one. mine would be hell's paradise then so good I just finished up the the season not too long ago but so good just that's an anime it's an anime and i mean it has a little poquito romance very poquito but you know it's a good time <laughs> Wow. Uh, I, I'm going to recommend All Tomorrows. It is a, a, a short novel about uh, it's science fiction, uh, speculative evolution, mm. uh, in, written in 2006 by C.M. Coastman uh, under the pen name like Nemo Ramjet. Uh, it's super, super interesting if you're curious about like how life might come to be in different environments. Love that. It, it's really, really interesting. It's a really good read. It's short and some horrifying illustrations in there if you're, mm -hmm. if you're big into like the body horror thing. Uh, okay. Check that out. Also, uh, he's rewriting it to be longer because it was too short. Mm -hmm. Boom. Love that. Thanks for listening, y'all. Thanks for hanging out. Glad that you're here. Like, subscribe, share with friends, with enemies, with cousins, um, <laughs> as as others uh, say, and help us continue to grow. We're, um, it's fun to see our, our community and online community and connections grow beyond our circles and so much fun. So uh, thanks, y'all. Thanks for listening. And always remember... The geek in me honors the geek in you. I think that's what I did.